Yesterday on State of the Game, they talked about title update 9.1 and that it's coming May 12th, which is next Tuesday. And it will focus around NPC balance changes, bug fixes and more. So I thought I would go through that in today's video. So starting off here, a bug causing players to regain SHD levels by using the points in conflict will be addressed in tomorrow's maintenance. Title update 9.1 includes a wide array of balance changes for NPCs, mostly affecting accuracy and aggressiveness during combat. A new optional global event, Reanimated, is bringing enemies back from the dead as part of Season 1. If you are interested about information about the global event, I did make a video about that yesterday. And then we head to the priority alert, so maintenance was performed yesterday. And they added more spawn points for reinforcements during Warhound convoy activities. This will make the activity be more in line with other open world activities in terms of completion time. Which is currently like a way that's really good to get uh, experience. So that's getting fixed. Fixed an issue making it possible to kill Javier Kajika in the Pathway Park main mission before the final encounter. That's also a way that you could kill the boss super early in the mission, so that's fixed. The team is also tracking an issue that can cause multiple Kajika enemies to appear at once during the mission. A fix is being developed for a bug causing SHD level points to be regained by using the points in conflict. I have no clue what this is really. So the developer will deploy a fix for this during tomorrow's maintenance. Usage of this bug is not considered an exploit and no disciplinary action will be taken against affected players. So people that have done this on purpose or not purpose will see the following behavior for their SHD levels following in tomorrow's maintenance. For players who have spent more points in one of the four affinity categories than they have gained, all affected categories will be reset. And any additional SHD level gains through this method will be removed. All SHD levels gained legit will immediately become available for players to spend on their watch. If no extra levels gained from this bug are present on player's account, no change will happen and SHD levels will remain the same. The developers are continuing to investigate connection issues, Delta and Foxtrox errors to be more specific, that some players are still experiencing. This issue is not something that the team have seen before and the underlying cause hasn't been found yet. The developers made some adjustments during recent maintenance. Work continues to resolve this permanently. NPC balance changes in title update 9.1 Title update 9.1 is scheduled for May 12 as I said before and will include fixes for the following issues as the developers continues to work on the game's health. Frame rate drops in the dark zones. Finally this is happening though but it's, this is just too late. This is like what two months and dark zone mainly matters in my opinion in the beginning when people actually need loot. Like now it doesn't really matter but hey good that it's finally fixed. Friendly Oxidizer damaging ally skills. Recommended activity tab not closing. The frenzy talent staying active when swapping weapons. Yeah, there was a, a frenzy trick you could do while reloading and swapping weapon to get the buff. I thought it was a pretty cool trick, so I, I thought this could have stayed, but I guess it was not intended, so getting removed. Title update 9.1 will also include balance changes for NPCs. Addressing enemy skills, weapons and abilities that stand out as causing difficulty spikes. The developers are still looking at further changes and adjustments and the first pass includes the following. Nerf damage and out of cover accuracy of the SMG used by the red bar hyena assault. Reduced damage from burn and bleed status effect also affects PvP. Nerfed NPC grenade throw accuracy. Accuracy is reduced further based on the distance to the target. Elites have better accuracy and, and hunters, rogue agents and legendary NPCs have better accuracy than elites. I think when it adds some accuracy to the grenade or grenade launcher and stuff, it sometimes makes it harder because especially with the grenade launcher, you can't predict because they're gonna be so off the target, right? So you kind of try to play a bit smart, but they is not accurate and then they will hit you anyway. So <laughs> I don't know. At least when it comes to grenade launcher, I wouldn't mind it being accurate, but for grenades, it's probably fine. Decreased accuracy of hyena throwers, airburst, black tusk mini tanks grenade, and cleaners napalm airstrike turret. Reduced NPC accuracy while blind firing. That's so good to see because that was really, really dumb. Legendary NPCs gets more accurate the longer they blind fire. Okay, that, uh, I mean, I'm fine with that as long as it don't are super accurate on the first bullet, I guess. 
NPCs will no longer blind fire with a shotgun or sniper rifle. Instead, they will switch to a pistol to blind fire. Hunters, rogue agents, and some bosses are an exception and can break this rule. Also, tank archetype will no longer blind fire. I think this is good. There was nothing more annoying back when we played a lot of legendaries when the when the sniper NPCs would just instantly like one shot you with a blind fire sniper. That, that was really frustrating. Reduce the frequency and aggressiveness of NPC behavior when advancing on hidden targets, players who have not been exposed for a long duration. Fix some status effect reactions that could cause non-tank NPCs to path towards players aggressively. Note, this fix and the one above only address some source of the perceived NPC aggressiveness. Developers are still investigating other source and working on fixes. Reduce how much damage player skills take from NPC. Nerf range of cleaner tanks flamethrower. That was pretty crazy. Nerf Hyena RC cars to reduce damage of their explosion, the duration of lingering ground fire and the burn confuse status effect, and the frequency at which Hyena RC cars are deployed. So they're gonna spam them less as well, so that's nice. Nerf Black Tusk Suicide Drones to reduce damage from their explosion and how often they are deployed. Black Tusk Support Station no longer heals mechanical NPCs or destructible props. Object players have to destroy in a mission. The legendary version of the support station now has a healing cap amount, like normal version. Reduce the size of player hitboxes against NPCs when players are blind firing from behind cover. This should make it feel less risky for players to blind fire at NPCs. Armor kits no longer completely heal bounties and other bosses. Hunters will still heal completely. Adjusted status effect reaction priorities to fix an issue that allowed ensnared NPCs to still move if blinded or burned before being ensnared. Further lower the likelihood of a tank archetype rushing towards players' hives or turrets to stomp them. Yeah, this was. This have been pretty crazy sometimes. Like, they just push you like. Yeah, crazy. So, that's gonna be a good change once again. So, that's a lot of the NPC changes and nerfs. So, I mean, looking at them mainly, I think this is just gonna make it way, way better if all of this works correctly. It's just taking away a lot of the annoying stuff that they are doing and just making it more playable, I guess. And then they talked about the Season 1 Shadow Tide that Home League is on second week, the new global event, and also the Season 1 Manhunt that next week the fourth Manhunt target and the prime target will be available. Defeat all four Manhunt targets to get access to Jupiter and the special mission. Defeating Jupiter will grant the EMP Sticky skill mod and all targets will be available until the end of the season. There will be a way to earn EMP Sticky skill mod after the season has finished. More details to follow. But that's basically it. Let me know what you guys think about these changes. Anything in particular you think stood out? Let me know that in the comment section. I think I think this is pretty good though that they are fixing a lot of the, the issues. So hopefully this will make the, the gameplay experience a bit more fun and less uh, frustrating. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos. See you guys in the next one. Eagle? No, I don't think. Only year one and you can't get Eagle. Eagle is only from raid. I mean, if you want a good Eagle, just get it to drop. And then just uh, get Exotic Mats. You only need it once, right? He's fucking next level. I think like health damage is pretty worth. It's a lot of tanks and shit. Like Tusk, right? Like AR here. Pretty nice. Actually, I don't have too much time. It's almost 14. But I believe this is the last boss, yeah. I think that's it, yeah. So, uh, 14 minutes exactly. And I haven't played this mission since it launched. Like, I don't know this mission well at all.
Yeah, 14 exactly.